Welcome to Very Old Money, a podcast that looks at history through money. The concept of money shows up very early in human history. At the basic level, we started with livestock and agricultural products before moving on to commodities like beads, cowry shells, salt, and precious metals. The concept of accounting records, credit, debt, interest, and legal contracts existed for millennia before the invention of coins. Around the early part of what is sometimes called the Axial Age, The Greeks and Lydians around the Aegean Sea, India and China, all transitioned the concept of money further and started issuing coins. The types of coins, techniques and metals used are different and they suggest that each civilization arrived at this step independently. The weight standards used to quantify ancient sources of money, be it grain or metal, often carried on as names of denominations once coinage came into existence. Shekels, drachmas or drams, obols, staters, etc. Money itself has played a huge part in history. The prospect of plunder animated Bronze Age empires and the riders of the steppes. Money affected the ability of a state to protect itself, improve infrastructure or build monuments designed to boost the ruler's ego. Roman emperors who decided to practice austerity with their troops often found their reigns violently cut short. In the Middle Ages, the Kingdom of Denmark disappeared off the map for eight years because its kings had mortgaged it out of existence. Henry III of England's attempts to raise funds to get the crown of Sicily for his younger son was one of the reasons for the revolt that led to the creation of the first English parliament. Money and taxes were a big reason behind the English Civil War, the American Revolution, and the French Revolution. The coins and later the paper money used to monetize these economies often tell stories of their own. Roman and Greek coins often carry mythological motifs. Roman emperors and the Gupta emperors of India used these coins as instruments of propaganda and to project their glory. The vast amount of Roman gold aureae that was shipped to India to pay for Indian trade goods may have triggered the first native Indian gold coinages. And there are kings we know who are only known to exist from coins they issued. The ubiquitous late Roman bronzes were actually imitated as far as Sri Lanka. A Byzantine emperor sticking Jesus on the gold coins as empire paid as tribute to the caliphate inadvertently kick-started Islamic coinage that carried no images. The American dollar owes its name to a valley in the Kingdom of Bohemia, whose mines produced silver to mint large coins. Louis XVI's attempt to escape was foiled because a local official recognized him from his portrait on the newly issued paper money note, and so on. I'm not a professionally trained historian, but it is the stories behind history that drew me to the subject in the first place. Coins and paper money are all small repositories of history. Their shape, design, and denomination may carry a story of its own. If not, there's always a story about the person who issued the coin. And it's these stories that this podcast will explore. Now, a podcast devoted to money can run into some limitations. There is a possibility that we will struggle to bring out stories about the little people of history and spend too much time on the crowned heads that adorn the coins. Likewise, women are often absent on coinage. The Roman emperors regularly issued coins with their wives and daughters, and some Byzantine emperors did the same. But by and large, this pact has died out in Europe in the Middle Ages. There are a few Indian rulers who issued coins, naming their wives, but these are few and far between. The number of queen regnants, that is, 
women who ruled in their own right as not as consorts to their husbands throughout history is unfortunately rather low. So this podcast will try to bring in stories about women and the not so great people when it can. And this may sometimes be through exonomia like medals and tokens. I also plan from time to time to review the accuracy of historical movies and after that segueing into the representations of the prominent characters of those movies on coins, paper money and related media. So let's see how that goes. When I started planning the podcast, one obvious option was to approach this subject matter chronologically. Well, I'm not going to do that. If I followed that approach, I would be stuck in ancient Greece and maybe early Republican Rome for the next few years. And there are so many stories that I want to get to. So instead, after a few introductory episodes, I will jump from story theme to story theme across the scope of history. From time to time, I may do a standalone episode if something interesting catches my fancy. The first few episodes of this podcast will probably be related to European history, and then I will eventually move on to cover early coinage in India, China, and other parts of the world. So if your area of interest has not been covered yet, never fear, it probably will be. This show, for all practical purposes, is the history of world through money. That said, Since coinage was not invented until somewhere between 700 and 500 BC, there are millennia of history that likely will not be covered in this podcast. That will exclude most of ancient Egypt, Babylon, the Assyrians, the Indus Valley Civilization, and other civilizations of that time frame. Fortunately, there are other excellent podcasts that cover these topics, like Scott Chesworth's The Ancient World and Dominic Perry's The History of Egypt. Unfortunately, that also means that I will likely overlap at times with other giants in the podcasting world, like Mike Duncan's History of Rome, David Crowther's History of England podcast, and others. But hopefully the approach here will be different enough so that you will not get too bored. While most of the episodes will cover coins and paper money, we will still have opportunities to cover proto or ethnographic money. Because the use of coins was not uniform throughout history. Large part of the world did not use coins until as late as the 19th and early 20th century. The ethnographic money of Southeast Asia, Africa, pre-Columbian Latin America and others is fascinating in its own right, and I hope to get to that eventually. I will try to keep these podcasts on a weekly to bi-weekly basis, as the day job permits, I'm new at this, still working out the kinks, trying not to sound too robotic. And so now a few disclaimers slash announcements. First, if you see the cover art of the show, you will see there's a screen on there. The plan right now is to place coins pertinent to the show on the cover art, as well as my website, Very Old Money, and other social media locations. So if you are driving or operating heavy machinery, please do not stare at your screen while engaging in these activities. Second, I'm very grateful to a number of prominent dealers and collectors who have given me access to their coin images to use on on this show. When I use these images, I will credit the source. Which leads me to the next and somewhat odd disclaimer. I'm not a coin dealer. I do not own the coins whose images will be placed on there. So please, please, please do not contact me asking me for the price. This seems odd, but this is based on previous experiences on various coin groups on the internet. And so don't ask me for the price. Uh, This is an educational show. It's not a commercial venture. And if you do enter into any transactions with the dealers or collectors whose coins are displayed, that is entirely between you and them. Third, Since I will be covering a number of regions that are not native to my own, I can confidently assert that names of people, places will be butchered at times. I will try my best not to and will correct it when I can, but it will happen. Fourth and finally, the interpretations about some of the items being presented in the show are evolving or at times a subject of controversy. I will try to present these views when I can 
and at times will let you know what my preferred opinion is. However, it is possible that things will change after an episode is published. For example, there are these anonymous bronze coins that were once attributed to the last Egyptian pharaoh, Nectanabo II. These coins are anonymous, and the attribution was based on typological similarities on gold coins which are known to be Egyptian. And only the last two pharaohs of Egypt actually issued native Egyptian coins. So that made these coins very highly sought after. Unfortunately, recent scholarship has indicated that this connection is unfounded. The coin is approximately of the same time period, but it's likely from some unknown North Syrian mint. So while we spare some sympathy to a hapless collector who acquired these coins a decade ago and whose coin just lost a zero in value, this sadly is not uncommon when you deal with coins that have no text or only a couple of letters to help you guide attribution. This reattribution is an ongoing process. As a result, mea culpas will have to be issued from time to time. So with that said, this episode is basically an introduction to let you know what the plans of the podcast are, what we will cover, and I'm excited to finally get this podcast launched. It's been a work in progress for a while, so I will see you soon.